The human eye focuses a small part of the picture before it onto its fovea, a tiny, densely packed group of photosensitive cells in the middle of the retina. Our eyes roam around the scene, picking up bits of information about it from here and there, which are passed to the visual cortex of the brain at the back of the head. Eye focus and movement is controlled by the brain, which interprets the data passed to it by the eye and pieces together its own idea of what it's looking at. The precise physical form of our ideas, our mental images, is still a mystery, but cognitive science research has discovered two things about it. Firstly, ideas and thoughts are physically represented in our brains by the states and activities of their neurons, which perform information processing functions similar to those of transistors in an electronic circuit, as I explain in my book called Living Computers. And secondly, we can express what we think we see in language and by trying to draw pictures of what is in our mind's eye. But that doesn't mean that the mind has a photocopy of the scene we are looking at. The old adage about seeing is believing works both ways. That is, not only do we believe what we see, but we can also only see what we are capable of believing. We see with our minds. We recognize by recognition, by thinking, by cognitive information processing of a whole heap of fovea-sized spots of the image we are scanning, classifying and assembling pieces of the picture to produce our mental image, our memory of the visual scene. Because our minds interpret what they're looking at, we sometimes have amusing illusions. For example, Leonardo da Vinci confused everyone for hundreds of years about the identity of the Mona Lisa until 1987, when Lillian Schwartz used a computer to analyze the face in the painting and reveal the astonishing truth of how Leonardo had created his famous image of a woman with an enigmatic smile. The Mona Lisa is a man. <laughs> or rather, it's a feminized version of a man's face stuck on top of the body of the Duchess of Aragon. So who was he? You can find out what Lillian discovered by watching my YouTube movie on creation and creativity, which includes footage of a documentary about her forensic detective work. The viewer of a scene creates mental images in their mind about what they are looking at. But mental images are not pictures like photographs. They are instead information structures, as the philosopher Daniel Dennett explains. Um, uh, imagine a pirate of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. did he have a wooden leg? Mm. <laughs> well, now, you, if you imagined him, I mean, either you imagined him with a wooden leg or you didn't. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, did, did you even get to the legs? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, can't can. draw, you can't draw a picture of a pirate. You know, I, I, maybe that was an unfair. I should have. There's time for creation of image. Yeah, I, I should have There's given you a little, little more bit more. I should give you a little more time and say, I want, you know, the. Mm -hmm the whole pirate mm -hmm. standing on the shore mm -hmm. and I, w with, a, with an old-fashioned pistol in mm -hmm. one hand. Okay, now you've done that. Um, imagine him in a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, now I can start asking you questions like, can you see his belt? Mm -hmm. Does he have a belt on? How about his shoes or is he barefoot? And you realize that you just haven't gone into that. But if you draw a picture, the, the medium demands that you either obscure that area or that you, you settle it. In fact, w this is one of the important things about images. Uh, mental images are structures that, that you never really have to settle those questions. That's why they're not really like images. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Very interesting. Mental images 
are information structures. The modern word structure derives from the 2,000 year old Roman Empire word structura, which means a building. A structure is a building, a complex of parts, such as beams, and their connections, their joints. Man-made buildings are one kind of structure, but nature builds structures too. In fact, everything in our universe, from galaxies to atoms, is a structure. Your body is a structure, one made of parts like skin and bone, and muscles and organs such as the liver, the pancreas, and the brain. Human body structures are colonies of cells, autonomous amoeba-like creatures that are made of even smaller structures such as mitochondria, ribosomes, and microtubules. The colony of your body has a hierarchical structure interlaced by three information communication internetworks. Your bloodstream, endocrine system, and nervous system. Your left hand doesn't know what your right hand is doing, but they are indirectly connected by the communication systems of your body, so their coordination is possible. Communication is the exchange of information in a language. There's a lot of nonsense talked about humans being the only animal that has language. Just as hundreds of years ago, there was a lot of nonsense talked about the human mind having access to a spiritual dimension, a meme descended from ancient superstitions. All living things communicate with language, and so do non-living things called computers, even if their expertise at speaking English is still a bit primitive. Humpback whales and sparrows communicate with languages that sound to us like songs. Dogs use body language and facial gestures, and ants communicate with chemical messages. Bees wag their tails in an elaborate dance that tells the story of where there is something nice to eat and trees being eaten by antelopes warn their neighbors of the danger by releasing chemical signals that the other trees can smell so that they can prepare their defenses by adjusting the chemistry of their leaves to make them poisonous to the predatory antelopes. That's not only carnivores that are predators. Language messages are transmitted through a physical medium such as light, sound, electric fields, and perturbations of the chemical environment that we call smells. But the essence of a message is independent of the medium of transmission. It is what it means, the information it carries. Time flies like an arrow in one direction only, from before to after. So messages are sequential, transmitted linearly along the line of time but the information a message encodes has a non-linear structure. For example, the line, time flies like an arrow, but fruit flies like a banana, has an information structure like this. Or maybe like this. Bananas don't have wings, but they can fly towards the center of the earth as fast as Usain Bolt. And all flies are time flies, for like us, they have built-in biological clocks that tell them when to wake up and when to sleep. The message you're looking at is ambiguous, because it has four possible structures. Two on the left, and two on the right. But in every case, the head of the structure is the word but, which is a kind of joint between two beams that talk about time and fruit, or about what different kinds of fly like. The word but is not just a syntactic connector like a comma or a dash. It says that what came before is true, but what comes after is an exception to that rule. By the way, you'll notice that the structures look nothing like the grammar trees you were taught in school, because old-fashioned context-free grammar is a lot of nonsense 
You can blame Aristotle for leading teachers up the garden path of confusion because 2,000 years ago it was his wrong idea that a logical statement is composed of a subject and a predicate. And medieval grammarians adopted Aristotle's idea as their model of language. But in 1852, George Boole realized that a logical statement has a structure like that of an algebraic expression. In 1995, I proposed that English does too, and is comprised of two fundamental types of things, only two. Parts called concepts and connections called relations. Concepts and relations are themselves structures comprised of substructures. For example, the word but is a simple relation that connects two structured concepts. The first being that a special kind of fly, called a time fly, has a liking for arrows. And the second being that fruit flies prefer bananas to arrows. The structured concept fruit flies is comprised of the concept flies and the concept fruit. In English, the first word in a pair qualifies the second, whereas in French it is the other way around. If you close your eyes, you can imagine seeing a fruit fly buzzing around a banana. And without too much effort, you can also imagine a time fly buzzing around an arrow, even if your common sense tells you that there's no such thing as a time fly. When you look at something, it feels like you see it exactly as it is. But experiments have shown that we don't see what is right in front of our eyes, but what we think is there. And what we think is colored by both our expectations, the surrounding context, and the parts of the picture that attract our attention. Seeing depends on believing. The Mona Lisa looks like a woman, not so much because of the shape of her face, but mainly because of her clearly feminine bust line and female attire. Da Vinci used his drawing of his own face as the prototype for the portrait, but made himself look young and feminine by leaving out his wrinkles and bushy eyebrows, narrowing the chin, softening the line of the jaw, and making the lips a little fuller, completing a deception that fooled art critics for centuries. Magicians regularly fool their audiences by sleight of hand and techniques of distracting attention away from secretive movements. Your mental image of what you think you are looking at is not a reproduction of the scene before your eyes, but a model of it, one composed within your brain. It is the image you imagine, an information structure composed, like all mental structures, of concepts and their relations. Some of these concepts are seen fragments or abstractions of them. Others will be links to remembered prototypes stored in your memory. That's how we are sometimes reminded of having seen a similar thing before. It's how we recognize, we recognize. Very interesting.